right now. My favorite part is that we are now uh, the owners of our own destiny. Like, like if we win versus the Pelicans, there's nothing the Kings or the Warriors can do to leapfrog us. So that is awesome. Uh, that, that's phenomenal news. And the best case scenario is that we'll face the Suns in the first game uh, of the playing tournament if this remains. But, of course, we still got to beat the Pelicans that are going to be really tough, y'all. We're going to be really, really tough, but we got to beat them on Sunday. And remember I told you guys I had a feeling that this game was going to come down to the Pelicans, that this season was going to come down to the Pelicans game at the season finale? I kept saying it every time we looked at the schedule. Well, here we are now. It all comes down to that game on Sunday, but we are the masters of our own destiny. And that's the way I wanted to have his little fire emojis in the chat if you're excited. Lakers back. And all it took was the Pelicans beating the Warriors tonight. So shout out to the Pelicans. We salute you. And, of course, the Suns. I never thought I'd be saluting the Suns, but we salute you, Phoenix Suns, and y'all fans for uh, for beating the Sacramento Kings. And, boy, let's make it. I saw the last two quarters of that game. It never looked like the Suns were going to win. Shout out to Bradley Beal. He put on. He put on, y'all, and, and they came back, and they, they did their thing. But this is beautiful to watch. I mean, just look at these standings, y'all. That means we got one game left to play, right? One game left to play. And, by the way, it hasn't updated yet. But the Kings have 46 losses, which means they cannot leapfrog us, no matter what. No matter what, right? So that's going to be entertaining. Best part is we could end up facing potentially the Timberwolves or the Thunder in the first round. Both very winnable. So just like that, ladies and gentlemen, we are back in business. How you guys feel now, right? We weren't we weren't too happy about the win earlier. Well, boy, this is going to be insane if the Lakers beat. Of course, it's a big if. But if we beat the Pelicans on Sunday, all bets are off. I'm taking my Lakers in any seven game series. I don't give a damn. Yeah, we're switching the energy from earlier to now because everything has changed. And, man, it feels amazing, guys. It feels amazing. I couldn't believe the Kings lost at home. They had that game in the back. Matter of fact, we're like four minutes left. They were up, I think, six or seven. My goodness, man. But it, does it not feel – it feels wonderful, man. It feels wonderful that the fact that the Lakers, we lost those previous two games, and it could have bit us a lot worse. But for somehow, I don't know how we, we came – Semi unscathed out of this, assuming we beat the Pelicans, man. Uh, but again, that's not going to be an easy game because the Pelicans, I don't know if they've ever had a 50 win season in their franchise history. They're at 49 right now. So, guess what? They're going for it. They are going for it in that last game of the year. And it's going to be just a blockbuster game. Oh my God. I, I'm, I'm like, it feels like Super Bowl Sunday. That's what it's going to feel like. That exciting. And uh, I know seven points is nothing. You're right about that. But when you're on the road, I don't know how the Suns won because they don't play defense at all whatsoever. They play zero defense, um, and somehow they figured it out at the right time. De'Aaron Fox turned it over, you know. Bad. But I will say this. The officials were letting the Suns get away with some BS. Like, I saw a couple of shoves and stuff, um, but that's that's typically how it goes for the Suns, you know. But uh, we'll take it right now. Right now. For those of you just tuning in, yes, the Lakers have regained – and are the sole pro 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 how do I say proprietors of the eight seed? Right? <laughs> Somehow we have ended up here, y'all. I don't know how. And all we gotta do to solidify this now, all that we have to do is beat the Pelicans, right? And it's not gonna be easy. You're talking about just a, a crazy, talented athlete. And oh, by the way, Brandon Ingram will be back for that game. By the way, Brandon Ingram will be back right in time for that final game. With no word of Vando yet. Not a single word of Vando. So am I nervous? Yes, I am. But do I believe in my team? Yes, I do. Um, <clears throat> I'll read a couple of comments. Yeah, I just wanted to come on quick and celebrate with, with you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I never rooted for the Suns so bad. Facts. Me neither, bro. Trust. What if we lose against the Pelicans, Dan? You don't want to know what will happen. Because I, the Warriors still have a game. Uh, but doomsday scenario, we could end up in the 10th seed. Remember. There's a three-way tie between the Kings and the Warriors. We don't have the uh, we don't have the tiebreaker. They do, so we don't want to end up anywhere tied around them. You know what I'm saying? We we don't we do not want to end up anywhere tied around them. Now, there is a chance, okay, 
Oh, how many games do the Suns have left? Let me let me double check that really quick for you guys. The Phoenix, I believe they got two games left, do, don't they? No, they have. Okay, so they have one game left, right? Okay, that's not bad. Um, he said, I want to do the Suns so dirty, bruh. They did us a favor tonight, so I, I will refrain from talking smack about the Phoenix Suns and their fans tonight. Cheers. Y'all definitely did us a favor. But, yeah, Lakers now in the A seat as we speak right now, ladies and gentlemen. And how did we do it? Abracadabra. Alakazam. That's how we did it. It was magic. There's, We barely beat the Grizzlies today. That would Imagine how devastating it would have been if both the Kings and the Warriors lose today like they did, and we would have lost to the Grizzlies. That's why I was so frustrated earlier. But um, it's a blessing, man. I I, I can't even look. I, I can't be an ungrateful fan. I gotta say thank you to the Pels and to the Suns. It's probably the only time in my life you will probably hear me say those words. So I, I kind of feel gross just saying it, but uh, they really did. <laughs> they really did us a solid. Yes, thank you, Frank Vogel. You did one more solid for the Lakers. But I like it. See, because the AC changes everything. Thanks so much for super chat, brother. I appreciate that. Um, the AC changes everything for us. Assuming. We play the eighth seed, right? We end up here. Let's say after Sunday, <coughs> we win. We're the eighth seed. Um, matter of fact, matter of fact, hold up. I think we could be the seventh seed, huh? Well, yeah, regardless, if this was the play-in tournament and it started, whoever wins that first play-in game will move up to the seventh seed. And that seventh seed will then go on to face whoever is at number two. That's huge. That's huge, Okay. Now, Nuggets could still leapfrog. There's still some, some to be said about these last couple games they're going to play, but they can still leapfrog and move around. But we could end up playing the Timberwolves in the first round of the playoffs, y'all. That would be nuts. But most importantly, if we win, we we would – um. most importantly, we don't have to play potentially two games on the road. Even if we are here – um. Right, even if we are here, I think only one road game, if I'm not mistaken. But regardless, man, eight seed just feels amazing compared to what what could have been. We could have been relegated and stuck at the ten seed. If the Kings and the uh, and the Warriors would have won tonight, it was almost impossible for us to move up. But right now, guys, everything's back in our own damn hands, baby. You don't understand how good that feels. Yeah, you know, it doesn't feel good to rely on other teams. We had to do it today, but I'd rather do it today than. Then for it to wind down towards the end of the season and for it to come down to that, man. I just feel, I feel good, Chad. How are we feeling? He said we need to win the seventh seed. Well, yeah, we, obviously, if we play, whoever we play in the seventh, winner of that becomes the seventh seed automatically. Feels good, though, doesn't it, Dre? We are back, and all it took was a couple of miracle wins. But I told you guys yesterday there was a chance both of those things could happen today, and they did. I'm glad they did. I'm so happy they did. <clears throat> Um, is that Lakers will play Pelicans in the play-in with a win on Sunday for the seven seed? <sighs> I will take it, man. I will freaking take it. I'll take it. I don't care who we have to play. But what I don't want is to have to win two games in the in the um play-in tournament. I want to be able to play one and win that one and move forward. That is the key right there. Um Tara said, uh, hold on. She said, I've never seen the Suns and the Lakers fans unite like we're doing right now. It's kind of cool, honestly. It is. Once in a while, you know what? We'll have a common enemy and a common foe. And you know what the saying goes, sis. You know, the the enemy of my enemy. Oh, no. How, how does it go? I think it's the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Right? And, and that's exactly what happened here. Right now, we needed the Suns to win. I'm not going to call them the Phoenix Buns. I'm going to put some respect <laughs> on their names just for the night, all right? Because yeah, I don't want to seem like an ungrateful fan, but they came through big time. They won by one single freaking point. And again, this is everything. And this is why we love basketball, right? People are already giving up on the Lakers. I say we never give up to the bitter end. Never, never, ever, ever. Let this be a lesson to those that gave up on us already. This is why we watch every game. This is why we break down every single possession. And this is why... We cheer our team endlessly because you never know. And right now, Lakers are sitting pretty in that eight seed. I don't care who we face in the first round. As long as we get into the play-in tournament and only have to win one game, I'm with it. I'm with it, man. 
Now you're not obviously you're not out of you know there's still gonna be where there's smoke there's fire there's still gonna be a lot of heat it's still gonna be nerve wreck time all that good stuff but at least we know that if we win one game we advance instead of the mandatory two but it's still we must beat the Pelicans right we must Motorsport Vault says that's why the Grizzlies win was biggest of the season and best everyone was clowning me for saying that. I don't know who was clowning you for saying that, but God bless your heart, Motorsport. I will tell you this, though. The biggest one of the season is going to be the Pelicans one. That's the biggest game of the year. And I have a feeling it's going to be a freaking dogfight, man. I have a feeling. I, I don't like this feeling, but when these feelings happen, they might go into double overtime or some shit. Like, that's what it feels like that, right? So we got an opportunity, though. It does feel good to have fate back in our own hands. Like, it feels amazing. That's that's what basketball is all about. You don't want to rely on others in order to advance. You want to rely on yourself. He said, we can take care of the Suns. I think we can beat anybody in the play-in tournament, but I just want to have the privilege of only having to play one game in the play-in tournament. That would be huge. Trust me when I say that. That could be every, That could be different. the difference between an injury and, and not an injury. Or, you know, overexerting our superstars, especially our old, older superstars. Thanks so much for Super Chat Motorsport. Thank you, brother. Yeah, but you don't never listen to people make fun of you, man. We all have our basketball opinions. Some are right, some are wrong. But at the end of the day, they're all opinions, baby. As long as we respect each other, it's all love on this side. But I'm happy, man. I'm, I'm going to sleep a very happy camper after a long day. A very painful game to watch on the Lakers side. But shout out to LeBron for, you know, this is why people tell me, Dan, how come you're not so hard on LeBron? I am. I'm hard on everybody, but how can you be hard on a 39-year-old that just pushed our team to a, yet another victory and puts us at the doorstep? All the Lakers have to do now is walk through it. We're at the doorstep. Eight seed can be solidified with a win against the Pels. I mean, and I told you guys, remember like a week ago, man, I have a I have a bad feeling, or not, not even a bad feeling, but I have a, fe a gut feeling that that Pelicans game is going to be, we're going to be playing for something, and sure enough, we're playing for a top eight seed. Remember, that was my goal. I just wanted us to be a top eight seed. That is it. Six would have been nice, but I will listen. Eight sounds beautiful right now, especially after being at 10 this late in the season, right? It's kind of like hot potato. You don't want to be caught with a potato in your hand when uh, the, the clock, the timer goes down. And that's the best part, Tara. You're absolutely right. You already, you know, this is a little spoiler alert for my pregame, but that's my key right there to the game. Anthony Davis. Now, remember, Pelicans fans, when they made the trade with us, they were saying they wanted AD to get hurt and wishing him the worst. Ain't going to be no better revenge than for AD to walk into New Orleans and whoop on that ass. Not once, but potentially twice if we face him in the playing tournament. Oh, man, that would be glorious. But we're ready. This Sunday can't come quick enough. I was excited for UFC 300. That All that went out the window. I'm more excited for this game now. But I love this is what I love about basketball. Dan, have you paid attention to the Dodgers game? It's in extra innings. Honestly, I, I, I was more because, you know, obviously the Lakers are headed towards the postseason, so I was more focused on them. Once the Lakers season is over, I will shift my attention to obviously the playoffs and then after that to the Dodgers. I will be covering them on this channel, so stay tuned for that. Hit that like button for sure. Um, but, yeah, right now my focus is mainly on the Lakers right now, man. You guys know how it is. Um, Daniel, thanks for Super Chat, my brother. He said, AD going ham in New Orleans. Only way we lose will be Darwin's rotations. Let's not even speak such evil, vile, satanic, baphomet type things into existence, man. The Lakers will win, all right, because it is destiny, it is fate. And after we win, we will go into the first round, and we will upset. And after we win that first round, we go into the second round, and we will upset. Then we will get back to the Western Conference playoffs, where we, we have some work to do because we need revenge for last year. Then we will go into the finals and kick everybody's ass. Everybody, whoever shows up into that finals is going to wish they never showed up for it because we are whooping that ass. We're going to speak that into existence. Yes, I'm feeling good tonight. And no, it's not the juice because it's just regular mango juice tonight. Um, <clears throat> is it not getting noticed anymore? Uh, what the hell? But happy to be here. Man, bro, I, yeah, I don't I don't know what's going on with YouTube. Uh, but like I said, I will start, uh, you know, um, this was – sometimes I'm just going to pop up. Y'all got to know. I'm going to pop up when – Crazy shit happens, even during the playoffs. But um, I got to start, like, the pregames and all that. I'm going to start, like, doing it, like, multiple hours ahead. That way you guys hopefully get the notification by then. That's my only solution because YouTube don't want to do your, don't want to do the kid right. I got 24K subs, and sometimes I feel like I got 4K subs, you know? 
So it's crazy. And it's not your guys' fault. You guys have been doing a tremendous job supporting, liking, subscribing, all of that. But it's that shadow ban crap. Um, uh, Frederick says, hey, bro, listen, I think it's possible that the Pelicans and the Suns seat their starters on Sunday. Um, they're set in their seeds. That would be nice. But I think we're going to have to pry it from their cold, dead hands. I just have a feeling. You know, I think we're going to have to. But, yeah, that would be obviously if we they hand us a top eight seed, pff, we'll take it gladly. Right. But as you can see, nothing is gifted. You saw what the Memphis Grizz Bears did tonight. You saw what they did. They tried to sneak one on us. And then John Morant wasn't happy when LeBron was over there dancing on him. <laughs> but uh, I mean, can you help it? LeBron's a young man. and He was ready to rumble, man. John, not, John didn't want the smoke. Um, but we're going to speak some phenomenal things into existence. Can you imagine if the Lakers win a championship this year in 2024? How symbolic and iconic that would be, not just for the Lakers, but for LeBron as well? <whistles> oh, man, a man can dream, can he? A man can dream. It's going to be an uphill battle all the way through, though. And there's going to be a lot of emotion. So make sure if you guys are ready for it, man, subscribe, hit that like button. And I'm here for you guys. I'm here, man. We're all we got during the, the distress and during the happiness. As you've seen, this season's been just such a roller coaster. Earlier, we were disappointed in the fashion in which we won. And tonight, we're happy in the fashion in which other teams have helped us out for the night. So, again, we're going to be classy fans. Say thank you, sons. And uh, and thank you, Pelicans. Uh, we're the Lakers. Nothing comes easy. We're Hollywood, right? Aren't we? We are so Hollywood, man. We love the drama down here. It's always something. If it ain't Darvin Scam, is is other stuff. There's always some drama in La La Land. But hey, we're built for this. We are built for this. I don't think any other fan base goes through as much of an emotional roller. I might be wrong, but I don't think they go through as much as an emotional roller coaster as Laker fans do. It's like, right? It's like this the whole way. Uh, do you think we can win a championship this season with Darvin Scam? Uh, I think anything's possible, fam. We won one with Frank Vogel, and I didn't think he was a championship level coach. Um, but I think LeBron James is a championship caliber superstar. You saw what he did tonight, man. He, he can turn back the clock whenever he pleases. Um, and then AD, you know, he, if he's healthy and he feels good and we get Vando back, and everything has it has to be like a perfect storm and it has to culminate propelling us forward every single series. There has to be different players that step up every series, every game. And we have a deep enough team to make a splash for sure. You know what I'm saying? Question is, will we do it? <laughs> because we had a, I, I thought we had a deep enough team to make a splash last year. Clearly we did. We made it to the Western Conference Finals. But the question is, can we do it? I'm, I almost busted a shack and saying, can you dig it? That almost made me say that, man. I'm so hyped. Um, I'm not worried about Sunday's game because I know LeBron and AD will be locked in on Sunday. Oh, I'm always worried for every game. I'm always worried for every game because they were locked in today, but we almost still lost. It's basketball, man. It's just basketball is like a coin flip, especially for our Lakers this year. We just don't know what version of us is going to show up. Tonight, we, we had like a lethargic version for the most part, with the exception of LeBron James. And then he propelled us and he, you know, moved us forward. But we're going to need other people to chip in because what's going to happen is what happened last what happened last year, right? LeBron carried so much by the time he got to the Western Conference Finals, he was out of juice and nobody else stepped up. Right, AD got dominated. Uh, D'Angelo Russell was a no show. Reeves, he was okay, but it wasn't like enough to propel us forward. And uh, so this year, I hope we have our legs under us. I hope we have all our energy and everything. I really do. I don't trust the coach either, brother. I'm right there with you, Daniel. Thank you, brother. He said, Aren't the six and seven seeds locked in? It's a whole difference with one game each for those teams. They might be, they might be locked, right? But Look, I don't expect anybody to do the Lakers favors. It'd be nice if they sit everybody out and we can just collect that dub and head on to the playoffs and all of that and head into the play and only win one game. It'd be nice, but can't hold our breath, man. We Look, Brandon Ingram is coming back for that game. I'm pretty sure they're going to want to give him some run, right, right before the postseason so he can get his feet wet. So I don't expect people to sit out. If they do, perfect, beautiful, wonderful. I'll take it. But if they don't, which most likely they won't, we got to be ready. We got to be mentally locked in. And we got to be prepared. Uh, but thanks so much for Super Chat, bro. Truly appreciate it. Uh, uh, Skyder Northwest says, Sky Tier, my bad. I said that wrong. He said, we're 4-2 and two against the Pelicans this season. We can beat them with their starters. Of course we can. The Lakers, when they are locked in, they can beat anybody, man. We've proven it. We beat the Celtics, one of the hottest teams in the league. 
Um, you know, we beat the Bucks without LeBron James um, and AD. Like, we, we've beat some great teams. We, or, or, I wouldn't even say great, but we've beat some really good teams this year. And, uh, of course, I think if AD and, and, and LeBron can lead the way and they can lead by example, the role players will follow suit. Uh, but I do believe Darwin has to get out of his own head and he has to be prepared to make the proper adjustments this time. He has to learn from last year's playoffs. Otherwise, we're doomed. No matter what we do, no matter how hard players play, if our head coach puts us in a position to, to fail, we will fail, right? I, I made the example of chess pieces. <clears throat> you got to move them in the right position in order for them to succeed, right? You're like, that's what the coach is. Um, you could you could look pretty sitting there on the chessboard. Looks like you got all the advantage. You got the numbers. You got everything. But then, you know, what I'm saying when they get when the match starts, <laughs> if there's a goofy controlling, you can go against us, man. He said we just need to win Sunday. Yeah, one game at a time. Again, every game this season has felt so crucial. This has the potential to be one of the most memorable championship runs ever. Like if if, if we end up winning the championship, we're gonna look back at this season as one of the most adverse seasons. Like so much adversity. From beginning to end. But again, one game at a time. I don't even think about playoffs, right? I'm thinking about Sunday. And once we win Sunday, then I'll think about the next game and so on and so forth. But we are we are right there. We're right there, y'all. We are at the doorstep. And all we got to do now is walk through it. And I hope the Lakers will be prepared. But doesn't that number eight in 2024 look just so good? It just feels right to go in as the eighth seed in 2024. You see, you see the you see the symbolism, right? You see the symbolism, right? Number eight, the number eight seed going into the plane in 2024. It could it could be a sign that this is our year, man. Um, I you know what? I talked about this earlier on Playback TV uh, with my compatriots, my homies, and uh, pretty much uh, we came to the agreement that as much as I like the idea of that happening, the problem with that, Danny, is that. If a team automatically gets a playoff spot, there's always there's already a lot of load managing. Can you imagine how much load managing that team would? They would probably rest everybody until the postseason, and then people will complain about how unfair it was that let's just say the Lakers this season, if that was a rule, that LeBron and AD are so rested for the playoffs because they were guaranteed a a seed, right? So you see how that messes with that. So we got to look at it from a broad perspective. Like it's not fair, and I don't think the commissioner would do that simply because like a team would get a lot of rest. For the postseason, they would have a huge advantage on everybody else. And I think that you want to just, uh, you know, when you enter the play the playoffs, you want to be as equal as possible so we can get the best champion available. Um, let's see. If the Suns win and the Pelicans lose, Suns will get the sixth seed. Therefore, Pelicans will play hard to beat the Lakers if to keep the sixth seed. And, and not only that, again, this I, I I don't believe they've ever won 50 games in their franchise history. That's a huge accomplishment for them. I'm sure they want the big 5-0. I'm sure they want to make history, man. I don't remember in their Pau Gasol days or, or or their Jason Williams white chocolate days or or even in their Anthony Davis days, them winning 50 games. Correct me if I'm wrong. But that's, you know, I think that's going to be something. They're going to go hard. And so are we because we're playing, obviously, for the eighth seed. Um, so we'll see. Uh Let's see here. He said, I still don't trust Ham. Glad we got the win, but it was a frustrating win. Facts. He said, I pray Ham turn it around finally. Get it. He needs to ASAP. 110% agree, Gemini Don. 110% agree. Heartbreak Kid says, the eighth playing spot was very unlikely, but after Golden State Warriors and the Kings lose tonight, it is within our grasp. I like that. He said, we can, we can end taking the seventh playoff spot, uh, and I'm confident about that. So am I, brother. Let's get it. We all the way back. We are all the way back. And all it took was a little bit of a, a pre-Christmas Day miracle. All right. Like way pre, like months in, in advance. But uh it feels it just feels good to, to, to be the sole possessors at number eight right now for the moment. And we're gonna cherish this. And I'm gonna sleep like a baby tonight, knowing that we have a golden opportunity to actually make make it to the plane and eventually to the playoffs and hopefully make a splash. Again, I, I've been saying the playoffs are always fun. Basketball is my favorite sport in the world, but it's just not the same when the Lakers aren't in it, right? Still exciting, but it's not the same. So I think it's best for every, all parties involved. You hear that, Commissioner Davis? <laughs> I mean, Adam Silver, you hear that? I think it's best 
for all parties if the Lakers make the playoffs, okay? Um, we, we got the A seed, Maurice. We got the A seed for now, bro. It feels great. Even though we had that shitty game earlier, feels great to be back live and in charge, baby. Feels great. <clears throat> he said, now listen, if we somehow get to the finals after all of this and win it all, man, I'll be on cloud 100. This might be a tougher championship than the bubble one, but one thing I do know about this Laker team is they're battle tested. That's the one thing I do really like about us. It's like in any close game situation, we tend to win them. Like even tonight, for example, we were tested. A lot of things, we were even trailing at one point, right? And late in the game too. And somehow we figured out a way to win. Kudos to LeBron. But still, I mean, we've been doing that all year. If it's not LeBron, it's been Austin. If it's not Austin, it's been D'Lo, like versus the Bucks. If not, it's been Anthony Davis. And so if they could just put all that together at the right times, we have a, a great chance of beating anybody in a seven. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, who do you want the Lakers to play, Phoenix or the Pelicans? Phoenix doesn't play any defense, so I like that. The Pelicans, they're a scary team, man. I mean, they're not too scary where the like to the point where I don't want us to face them, but they're exciting. They're young. They're electrifying. Zion has been playing tremendous basketball lately. Brandon Ingram's about to be back. They're deep. They've put in, you know, they have experience. They've been in the playoffs a couple of times. I actually think the, the Suns would be a super, like not super, but it would be a much easier opponent personally because they don't play any defense. That would be awesome. Yo, this would be awesome, bro. I would love both of those things to happen. <coughs> ah, excuse me. Uh, AC, bro. Feels good, bro. It feels good, Nigel. Feels good, bro. We here. We here, baby. And they got to deal with us. They got to deal with us, baby. They, we ain't going away no time soon. So that's the most important thing is that people thought they can get rid of us. Nah, man. We here. We here. Sure, it took a little bit of an assist. You know, a Cliff Paul type assist by the Suns and the Pelicans. But we are here. And now we can officially decide where we end up by winning out, right? We lost two games and survived to tell the story. That's that's how I'm going to tell the, my grandchildren. That's how they're going to hear the story. But listen, back in 2024, the Kobe Bryant year, we lost two crucial games at the end of that season that could have costed us everything. And we lived to make the playoffs, not only make the playoffs, but eventually win the championship. Yes, I know I sound delusional. Damn it, let me be. I'm gonna have my I'm gonna have my my victory night tonight. Uh I'd rather them face the Kings, to be honest. I don't care who we face. Let's just get in the playoffs, man. Get me, get the Lakers in the playoffs, and hopefully it only takes one game to do it. So both of those things will be crucial down the stretch, I think, in the playoffs in the future, right? Um so Again, so much at stake on Sunday. They're already talking about it. Dave McMiniman just putting this out there. Uh, they win, right? If the uh, if they win, worst case scenario is eighth. If they lose, tenth is very possible, if not likely. So, worst case scenario is eighth. But here, here, they just dropped the scenarios right now. Let me explain. So, Lakers, Kings, and Warriors all finish forty six and thirty six. Kings win the three way tie because. Because of the better win percentage in all the games among tied teams, right? So we can't lose. But Lakers, Warriors, it says, um, oh, this is confusing. I'm sorry. I can't read this chart. <laughs> I can't. Yo, th these charts are confusing. I was just about to read it off to you, and I just got, I almost lost my brain just now. Uh, it was a very confusing chart. It had all kinds of lines going in different directions. I'm good. I'm not going to get into that. Just know this. We are... Current, I guess there's a way we can get to seventh. Obviously, I already mentioned that, but uh, but yeah, let's see. Let's see if this guy explains a little bit better. Shout out to Mike Trudell. So Phoenix has the tiebreaker over New Orleans Pelicans. So if the Lakers beat New Orleans Pelicans and the Suns beat Minnesota, Phoenix will be uh the number six. Okay, so I mean Phoenix, I, I guess they still have a no New Orleans Pelicans the seventh and the Lakers the eighth, meaning the Lakers stay in New Orleans, right? So basically, we play in that playing game like that. So again, but Phoenix does have the tiebreaker over New Orleans. So those things have to happen, right? Lakers beat the Pelicans and the Phoenix beat Minnesota. That means Phoenix would be the number six. That's the only way they get to number six, right? Now, if the Lakers beat New Orleans and Phoenix loses at Minnesota, the Pelicans would be the number six seed and the Lakers would travel to Phoenix. Ooh, getting crazy up in these streets, fam. 
So those are the scenarios right now. Those are the scenarios that are at play here. Um, and so we're going to have to see. We're either playing Phoenix or we're playing the Pelicans or worse. But those are the two that would get me excited. Obviously, both involve the Lakers uh, winning, right? So it's not very likely unless Minnesota sits out their, their, their players on the last one that the Suns beat the Timberwolves, right, in the last game. So what's likely to happen is the Lakers will probably uh, end up playing the Phoenix Suns. But if somehow Phoenix wins and the Lakers beat the Pelicans, we stay in New Orleans. We stay in New Orleans and we play them again for the play-in tournament spot. So that could be a mini little two-game series right there. Crazy, right? Crazy, right, Chet? But yeah, don't let me don't let me confuse you guys. Just know this: Lakers have to win regardless, and will be number eight seed for sure, right? Take any questions before I get off, y'all. I'm just I'm happy. I'm elated. Let's see. Um, had to jump in the middle of the date night to congratulate with my fam. Hey, shout out Mamba mentality. He said, "Let's freaking go, Lakers! Maintain and remain tomorrow." Salute, sir. Hopefully, you have a wonderful rest of your date night, brother. Man, salute to you. Can we still get the seven seed? There is no scenario that has shown me we can get the seven seed, so I don't think so. Um, arrange the pot. He said opponents in the play-in from the easiest to the hardest. Phoenix, Pelicans, Golden State Warriors, and Sacramento. All right. So I'll start with the, the hardest ones. I do believe that the hardest ones for us, for the way we match up. And, and thank you so much for Super Chat, brother is for the way we match up and the way they play because they're shifty and they got that one guy that ke keeps killing us, I think it is the Sacramento Kings. I think they'd be the hardest. Um, can we beat them? I hope so. All right. The easiest for me would be the Phoenix Suns, right? I guess the second easiest would probably be the Pelicans because they're uh, unexperienced. But the easiest for me is the Phoenix Suns. They play zero defense. Kings definitely the hardest. Warriors somewhere in the middle. Warriors are somewhere we're in the middle. They've gotten our number the last two times. But, man, I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you right now. This is it's just – this playing tournaments probably might be the most genius idea ever added to the NBA because we wouldn't be talking like this. Seating would have already been settled probably for the most part had it not been for the playing tournament. So think about that. Remember, when it first came out, a lot of people didn't like it. I said, I kind of like it. You know, it'll keep a lot of teams from tanking. So, man, crazy. Uh, is the easiest first round OKC? Uh, for sure. Let's see. E yeah, easiest first round OKC for sure. What is the latest on Vando? Such a mystery with his health. We don't have an update on him. They said they would update us at some point early next week, so I don't know. I just hope we get him back in time for at least something, something of an important game. I agree. I like the in season tournament as well. Adam did a great job, bruh. Look, look how, how heavily invested. I didn't even care about the Dodger game today. That tells you how important these games are. Usually I'd be double dipping and watching both, but I didn't even turn, I didn't even tune in to watch the Dodgers. I know the Dodgers will be good, even though they lost today in overtime from what I heard. But I know they'll be good. Very deep team. But the Lakers, man, that's where my primary concern is. By the way, is anybody watching UFC 300? It's going to be great, y'all. It's going to be great. Uh, Flippers lost to the Jazz, too. I know, but I'm kind of not even, I mean, does it really impact them in the standings? I think they clinched, right? So it didn't, didn't really matter, you know? It doesn't really matter, but uh, but yeah, man. Listen, I will say this, though. For those of you who have not seen X-Men 97, check it out. Check it out. Just completely off topic, man. That, that episode five was pff, super banger. Is it UFC 300? Let's go, bro. I'm excited for that. UFC 300 is going to be crazy. But even, like, I'm not even, like... Man, who, who you guys got? Who you guys got? What was your favorite card? I like the Max Holloway, Justin Gagey one. That's going to be insane, bro. Obviously, the main event is always insane, but man, so many different ones to watch. But anyways, guys, I don't want to hold you guys up too long, man. I just wanted to update you guys. Lakers currently the sole possessors of number A seed, and they will finish there if they win their final game. One game to decide it all. Wouldn't want to have it any other way. He said UFC 300 team. How's your man Sterling? He said, I would have uh, been there, but L.A. this week. Man. 
that's gonna be exciting. I mean, sports are gonna be exciting. Think about it. We got UFC 300 tomorrow, um, and then Sunday we got the Laker game, and then obviously Dodger games all in between, sprinkled all in between. That's gonna wrap it up for me, man. Very excited, very excited, guys. Hopefully, you guys have a wonderful rest of your night. I had to drop this video just because we're back, baby. A seed. Hopefully, we'll solidify it soon. Thank you guys so much for tapping in. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you already haven't for all things Lakers and more. And I'll see you guys soon. Peace.